The National Broadcasting Company invites you by transcription to join the chase. There is always the hunter and the hunted, the pursuer and the pursued. It may be the voice of authority or a race with death and destruction, the most relentless of the hunters. There are times when laughter is heard as counterpoint and moments when sheer terror is the theme. But always there is the chase. Taxi, mister? Where to? 81 and 5th? Traffic's murder, ain't it? And New York ain't a town no more. It's an open-air garage. Being a hacky these days is like running Wind Place and showing the rat race. Why do I do it? <laughs> he asked me why. I'm falling apart from trying to figure that one out for myself, and he's asking me why. You don't know what I got to put up with sometimes, mister. You don't know what kind of screwball life this hack run can turn out to be. You want to hear a story, mister? A yarn you ain't going to believe? Started right here in this cab, so help me. Right where you're sitting now. I still shake like jelly when I think about it. The hairs on the back of my neck stick out like pins in a cushion. I was driving across town that afternoon between Park and Madison when I'm flagged by a dame who's loaded down with mink so deep she can hardly breathe. She got rocks on her fingers, rocks on her ears. But the biggest hunk eye she's wearing is a diamond and emerald bracelet that almost blinds me on the spot. She raises her arm to flag me down. Where to, lady? 1153-69. You're practically there right now. Well, she flounces back in the seat, mister, while I move in the gear. And a little later, as I stop for a light, I take a look see through my rearview mirror. She's a fancy dish. No getting away from it. Now, where's that mink and rock candy trimming? She looks like a Christmas tree with 50 carat lights. She's strictly from the upper crust, mister. But I ain't no snob. So I make a little conversation, past time of day, like I do with all my passengers. Nice day, ain't it, lady? Wonderful. It almost smells like spring. You know, it stays like this. To... Hey, where you think you're driving, stupid bum? I got half a mind to kick your jackassy ears in. Are you old crumb bums ought to get your license provoked? Revoked? Uh, oh, yeah. I'm sorry I blew my top just now, lady. I forgot you was in the cab. It's quite all right. I think your outburst was rather colorful. Yeah? Uh, my house is just in the middle of this block, driver. The white stone townhouse on the left. Gotcha, lady. Now, wait till I stop, lady, before you start to get out. How much do I owe you? Uh, it's uh, 55 cents on the clock. Here's a dollar. Keep the change. Thanks, lady. What a doll. That should only happen to me. Well, it's getting around to six, mister, so I pass up another fare and drive west to Mike's Super Diner. Put on a feed bag. Find myself a parking spot near eight. As I lock my ignition and start to slide out, there's something lying on the seat in the back. Hits me in the eye like a night beacon at LaGuardia. It's the emerald and diamond bracelet the mink coat was wearing. Looking even twice as big as it did on her arm. I jump in back and see that the catch is busted, so it must have slipped right off her wrist as she was getting out. Next thing you know, I'm driving back across town like crazy. And drooling just a little, maybe, when I'm thinking of the fat reward. I find the house without no trouble. The joint was the size of a railroad station. And as I'm ringing the bell, I'm already spending the C note. She's sure to hand the ice man for bringing back the ice. Yes? I remember me, lady? No. Well, sure you remember. I drove you home about half an hour ago. I'm not hacking... What do you want? Well, take it easy, lady. I got some good news for you. About your bracelet. My what? The rock she was wearing. <laughs> you lost it in my cab. Here. Look. What does the man want, Diana? I haven't the slightest idea. This is your bracelet, lady. Don't you recognize it? No. 
I never saw that bracelet before in all my life. Lady, listen. And that goes for you, too. Well, mister, you can imagine how I felt. When I showed her the bracelet, she looked at me like I was something that crawled out from under a stone. And she slams the door in my face without taking it from my hand. I meet lots of screwballs in this business, mister, but this was the dilly that took the cake. Well, I drive back west again, slow this time, trying to get the pebbles out of my brain, and I think I hit on an answer. The rocks are phony, Nadge. They ain't worth more than five bucks on the line. She don't want it back from me because she ain't parting with no rewards. Anyway, this is what I keep telling myself, even though it don't sound right. So I walk into Mike's diner and find a seat next to Harry Potts, another hacky I know. And Adam and Eve on a raft, Mike, with Frenchies on the side. Uh, pass the ketchup, mister. Well, look who's here, Artie Spade in person. Hiya, Harry. <laughs> uh, how goes it on the street? I took in enough to make it pay today. And I also met the daffiest dame in town. Oh, you got to prove them words, mister. But with the dizzy numbers, I get hooked up with all day long. Oh, this one was the topper. All dressed up in phony rocks, she leaves laying around in my cab. Yeah, what kind of phony rocks? A cheap kind, jerk. Like this. Hey, let me see that. Wouldn't even take it back. And she gives me a song and dance, but... but well, what are you gaping at? You said these rocks were phony. I said. Well, you're off your nut. What? This bracelet's on the level, chump. How do you know, Harry? Wasn't I a jewelry salesman before I drove a hack? This chain ain't only legit, my friend, but it's worth at least a half a million bucks. You're kidding me. Do I look like I'm kidding? Now don't con me, Harry. This might be serious. Who's laughing? She wouldn't take it back, I tell you. She wouldn't take it back? She just slammed the door in my kisser. If that thing was real, is that normal way to act? Definitely, positively, no. And what gives? Buddy, maybe it's hot. Hot? Maybe she's afraid to touch it because she lifted it somewheres. She might be one of those klepto, klepto, kleptocardiacs. That could be. In which case, there must be a reward. For me, sweetheart. Give me them rocks. What are you going to do with them? Take it to the cops? And let them get the reward? Well, they turn it over to me. Suppose they don't believe your story. I don't get you. Well, look at it this way. A hacky walks in with half a million in jewelry. Maybe he lifted it himself, then got worried about passing it to a fence. The loot's too big, see? He might get fingered. So he brings it back as if he found it to collect a reward, and they, they slap him in the cooler. And there's another angle. Yeah? Maybe the dame's a lush. She didn't look it, but maybe she was pie-eyed when I showed up at her door, and so she says the chain ain't hers, and later she sobers up and yells she's been robbed. You're in a pickle, pal. Well, what are you so happy about? Who's happy? My heart is bleeding for you. So what are you going to do? I'm taking it back to the dame. Again? I'm going to find out what gives if it's the last thing I do. Well, good luck, Hacky. Because <laughs> it might be. So off I go again, mister, back across town. Park my hack in front of the house once more. By this time, it's dark, see, and the street is kind of quiet. Just as quiet as the house was when I walked up and pressed the bell. Ah. Uh, I must have rung that bell and my finger wore out. But I got no answer. And then just as I'm about to turn around and take a chance with the nearest flat foot, I notice the door's open. Just an inch. So, like the fat head I am, I walk right in. First room is the size of Madison Square Garden with an extra row of seats. And I'm walking through what looks like the public library when something hits me hard. It's feeling I get that everything ain't copacetic in this joint. I better lamp fast. So I turn around and hurry out again to where my cab is parked in front of the door. But as I start to get inside, I see the Damon Mink is sitting in the back. Where'd you come from, lady? Well, what are you staring at me like that for? I come back here to show you that bracelet again, and I... Hey, lady... Her eyes were wide open like two wet oysters. For a second, she seemed to sway, and then she tumbled over to the floor of the cab. I saw the glint of a ten-inch knife sticking right out of her back. Lady! Holy smoke, she's been croaked. 
And maybe she ain't dead yet. Maybe I can get her to a hospital on time. If you ever drove, Artie, start driving now. Stop. What's the idea, mister? Don't move this car, you filthy, thieving murderer. Murderer? Oh, me? You killed my wife. Stop pointing that gun at me, mister. It might go off. I'd like to finish you right here, but you're not worth the bullet. I'll turn you over to the police instead and let them give you the chair. Oh, wait a minute, mister. You got this all wrong. She was sitting inside my cab when I walked over here. I, I didn't touch her, so help me. No. What's this in your pocket? Hey, let go of me. A bracelet, eh? So that's why you knifed a poor defenseless woman for a fortune in gems. I found that bracelet. I, I was here before. you got to believe me, mister. I, I'm no crook. There's a police I... station four blocks west of here. You'll drive there directly, you understand, with me in the back. And if you make one false move, I'll... Come back here! Come back and I'll shoot! <laughs> I jammed my foot on the gas and ducked my head as he took two pot shots. But I was around the corner and nothing flat. For a second, I felt so relieved it was like walking on a cloud. Then my stomach went right down to my arches when I remembered that I was driving away with a stiff in my car. What's the matter? What's who's, who's at the door? Hey, Harry. Artie Spade. Let me in. Artie Spade? Well, for the love of Mike, a fine time. I take a social call. Let me in. All right, all right. Keep your shirt on. I'm coming. <laughs> what happened to you? Me? You look like a fugitive from a slab in a morgue. Shut the door and lock it. Huh? Shut the door. Gives with you anyway. Harry, are you my friend? Oh, this is a fine time of night to oh, ask Answer that. me. Are you my pal or ain't you? Sure, sure. Any day in the week, Artie. And you gotta help me. Help you what? Listen, you remember that bracelet? Remember it? Who can forget a haul like that? What do you mean, haul? You sound like I lifted it. I didn't say anything about lifting it. Well, what's your language? What's the matter with you? You got marbles in your skull or something? I took the bracelet back like I told you I wouldn't. You know what happened? What? I found a stiff in my car. Stiff? A dame with a knife in her back. No, 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 no. Wait a minute, Artie. You, 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 let's get this straight. What are you backing away like that for? You say you found a dame in your cab with a knife in it. What dame? The dame who owned the bracelet. Uh, where's the bracelet now? Her husband took it. Her husband? He tried to hold me up and run me in for murder, but I got away. I'm half nuts now, Harry. This thing's driving me to knock my head against the wall. We got to do something. We? Sure, you and me. We're pals, ain't we? Yeah, yeah, we're pals. Look, the first thing I got to do is get rid of the evidence. Yeah, what evidence? The stiff. Where is she? Still in my cab. Where's your cab? Well, it's parked in front of your door. Oh, we'll go... My door? Well, don't you see, Harry, that this guy, her husband, got me in a spot. Everything looks as if I conked her for the rocks. I got to have time to clear myself. How? Oh. I don't know, but I'll find a way. You sure her husband took that bracelet from you, Artie? I told you, he did not. Stop wasting time. Get dressed. Let's get out of here. Where are we going? I've got to get rid of the cab with the dame in it. I'm supposed to help you do that? You said you would. You go back on your word oh, no, and no, no, I... no, don't get excited. No, no, Artie, I'll come through. Wait here. Where are you going? I'd have heard somebody listening at the door. You stay put. I'll have a look at the hall. I waited a couple of seconds, and, and I thought I heard the sound of dialing just outside. I remember there was a hall phone out there. So I walked over to the door, poked my head out carefully, and listened. Operator, get me the police, quick. It's an emergency. He was crossing me. I had to move fast. There was a fire escape outside his bedroom window. Two minutes later, I was back in my hack on my way uptown. You know what it's like to drive a corpse around, mister? My skin still crawls when I think of it. I kept off the main streets while I tried to think of an angle. Then I got myself a brainstorm. I figured I'd park the cab in front of the city morgue and beat it. 
street was empty. When I stopped my cab, I was just about to get out and make a run for it. When I get myself a fare, I didn't ask for it. Right, taxi. Uh-huh. What? Taxi. So you're free, aren't you? <laughs> free as a breeze in the trees. Uh, not, not now, mister. Uh, not now? No. What's the matter now? It's now or never. Now. Let me see. Well, where's the one to go to? Oh, look, why, why don't you go home? Uh, hey, that's it. That's exactly where I want to go, Hacky. Home, sweet home. Now, let me see. Where do I live? What for the don't love of Don't prompt me, I tell you. Don't prompt me. I, I'm going to remember in a minute. You watch. Park Avenue, huh? No, no, it ain't Park Avenue. I ain't rich enough for Park Avenue. How about it, uh, Lexington? Lexington sounds good. You take me to Lexington. That... Hey. Hey, you you already got a fare. I told you I was busy. Hey, what's, what's the matter with her? Is she drunk or something? Well, was she lying on the floor? Yeah, like? yeah, she's uh, drunk. She's drunk. Huh. You shouldn't drink if you can't hold your liquor. Yeah. Let me help the little lady to her face. Don't touch her. Hey. Hey, this... This lady, she ain't drunk. <laughs> hey, she's dead. Police! Help, police! Well, mister, by this time, I don't mind telling you, Artie Spade was just about through. I was going hot and cold all over. I felt like I had a fever of 105. But something held me together, and... Almost like it was in a dream, I found myself driving up the West Side Highway in a Henry Hudson onto the Merritt Parkway. Merritt Parkway? Holy smoke, what was I going to Connecticut for? A weekend? It was bad enough the New York cops was probably looking for my scalp that I have to bring in another state. So I turned around and started packing. As I hit the Hudson Parkway once more, I remembered I had a gas meter I forgot to look at. I was out of gas, mister. In the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Having a little trouble, chum? I, I, I'm just run out of gas. Oh, hop in. I'll give you a lift to the nearest station. Well, come on. Uh, thanks. Yeah. You guys kill me. Did you ever read your gas gauge? Uh, my uh, gauge was busted, mister. Yeah. What's your name? Artie Sp uh, Smith. Oh, that's Gallagher. Glad to know you, Mr. Gallagher. Why? Oh, just that I'm... I don't pay any attention to me. It's my business got me loco. I'm a cop. You're a what? Private cop. A shaman's a private eye, a house stick with an overcoat. Don't you ever listen to the radio? Sure. Lots of times. Those guys kill me. Always running around solving murders. It's getting so I can't move out of my house without somebody coming up to me and asking, where's the corpse? Yeah. Must be tough. Yeah. You want to know something? Why? I never solved a murder in my life. No? And I never saw a corpse. No? Did you? No. You know what my specialty is? Why? Finding lost dogs. Yeah. You bet, buddy. And some of those Richie dames pay a fancy fee when Fido don't come home, you know. Oh, here's your gas station. Thanks. I, I'll get out now. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It's closed for the night. Oh, I, I'd rather get out here if it's all the same to you. Why? Well, I, I just think that... Anyway, my... way you are, Hackie, there isn't another station within six or eight miles, so you might as well come with me. Now, to get back to that uh, Shamus business, one of these days I'm going to meet a radio script writer and I'm going to bust every... He talked, mister, and I listened. And the nearer we got to town, the more I started to sweat. We finally hit the West Side Drive again, and he turned off from Washington Heights. And then he stopped for a light on a corner, and I started to get out. Where are you going? Oh, I'm getting out here, Mr. Gallagher. Why? Why? Yeah, why? There's no gas station. Close the door. Well, well I, I figured it may... Statewide manhunt for lady killer. Hey, boy, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the time. Keep the chance. Well, thank you, sport. Extra, extra, extra. Hack driver. What is the name? Hack driver. Hey, what did you say your first name was? Uh, 
Herman. Herman, my foot. You said it was Artie, and the guy they're looking for... Is... Hey, come back here! Stop that man! Well, mister, how, how long can you run, huh? I felt like I'd been chased from pillar to post for as long as I could stand it. But every time I thought of the hot seat, I always found a little extra energy somewhere to keep me going. I wandered around till 3 a.m., keeping off the big streets and trying to work out a plan. But nothing come to me. Then I remembered I had 300 bucks stashed away in my furnished room. It was all the money I ever saved. But it was enough to get on a cattle boat or something and end up in Tibet. So I walked over to my house, sneaked carefully up the stairs, with an eye open for any cops who might be posted. You already stayed? Who are you? My name's Ethel LaFrance. My stage name, that is. How'd you get my room? I walked in. The door was open. Oh, don't worry. There ain't any cops around. They had one posted outside about an hour ago, but he was called off. And they figured you wouldn't come back home. You know all about me, then. I know you're in Dutch. And I want to help you. Why? Because you didn't kill my friend. Your friend? Diana Carlyle. We were in the chorus together a couple of years ago... Before she married Kurt Carlyle, a millionaire. Kaya okay, tried to pull me in before. Listen, you're just a patsy in this setup. And I want to square accounts for Diana. She told me once that she was living on a volcano and that if anything ever happened to her, I should look inside her jewel box underneath the second layer. A jewel box? Look, I don't know any more than I'm telling you. All I know is that this whole bracelet business they're talking about in the papers is a phony. Diana was scared of her life long before she ever rode in your hat. Oh, lady, those words are the nicest I ever heard since my old lady told me I was the smartest kid in the block. Well, frankly, you look like a dope to me. Oh, but I want to see you get a break. Especially, I want the heel that killed poor Diana to, to get what's coming to him. You know, Diana might have left some evidence inside that jewel box. Find it. And maybe you'll have an out. Suppose we told that to the cops. Oh, not me, brother. Oh, I don't want to get mixed up in this thing, no how. Or I would have gone to them myself. And if you go to the cops, and if whatever's supposed to be in their jewel box don't happen to be there, you're a dead herring. That's right. Well, how am I going to find out? Well, I can tell you where she kept the box. It's in the lower bureau drawer in a bedroom. The first door on the left on the second story as you go up the stairs. Why, well, husband might be there. Well, that's your worry. But my guess is he wasn't home all night. The papers said he was combing the city with the cops looking for you. If I only had a house key. You may not need one. There's a door in the back, the service entrance. Might be open. Take a chance anyway. Sure. What have I got to lose? Lose? Nothing. But you got something to gain, mister. A slug in your head if her husband catches you. Well, I've done my bit. I'm going home and get some shut eye. So long, Artie. Don't take any wooden kimonos. Twenty minutes later, I was trying to back door to Miss Carlyle's house. I almost fainted with happiness when I found it was open. Walking like a cat, I went upstairs to the first floor on the left, the second story. I lit a match, found the bureau, and then I opened up the bottom drawer, saw the box. I lifted the lid, pulled out the upper layer, saw some letters. Then my match went out. I felt inside the box again, grabbed the papers, stuffed them in my pocket. As I turned around to move out in a hurry, somebody switched the lights on. Welcome. Hello, Mr. Carlyle. So you had the temerity to come back. Why, well, I, I, I just... And for what? Another attempt at theft, eh? You've been at my wife's jewel box. No, I didn't take anything. You're going to turn me over to the police? The police? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. What are you going to do? What does any self-respecting man do when he catches his wife's murderer inside his house? Don't you move. I still have my revolver, you see. Yeah, I see. <laughs> Killed in a second attempt to rifle his victim's home. That's what the headline will say. What could be neater? You mean you're going to shoot me? Yes. Uh, but before I do, however, I think there's something you ought to know, Hacky. 
What, Mr. Carlyle? I'm aware of the fact that you didn't kill my wife or even steal her bracelet. You are? You are completely innocent, you poor, misunderstood slob. And why are you going to kill me? For a very good reason. You see, I killed Diana myself. You say that again, mister. Only slower this time? I said I killed her myself. And do you know why? Why? You remember that bracelet she lost? Well, it was given to her by another man. That's why she refused to identify it when you brought it back. I was right there. Oh. Later, I killed her. That was just before you stupidly returned. I saw your cab parked outside, so I carried her body out, placed it in your hack, and waited for you. <laughs> Amusing, isn't it? Yeah, I'm laughing myself to death. Truer words were never spoken, my friend. And now I'll take care of you. Drop the heater, yeah. Carlos. What? Drop it or I'll ventilate you. Mr. Gallagher. Huh? How do you like my dialogue, Artie? You think those radio guys are the only ones who can put words together? <laughs> I thought I'd do a little investigating on my own, Artie, just to see if I could crack a murder case. <laughs> For crying out loud, I did! <laughs> Well, mister, that was all there was to it. What with Mr. Gallagher's spiel about what he heard Carlyle say and those letters in my pocket, I was a free man once again. Uh, the letters? Oh, they mentioned that Miss Carlyle was in love with another guy and that if something happened to either him or her, the cops should question her husband. Carlyle himself was tagged for a murder rap and... Oh, hey, here's your street, mister. 81 and 5th. That's a dollar by the clock. Hope you enjoyed the ride. Ah, oh, thanks, mister. Take it easy when you cross the streets now. Hey, uh, mister, did you take a good look at your seat before you left the cab? Make sure you got everything you stepped in with, mister? Because I don't want nobody, but nobody, leaving nothing behind. In the animal world, there is the hunter and the hunted. Hound and fox, hawk and sparrow, cat and mouse. But who is to judge precisely which is the pursuer or the pursued as we enter the chase? The Chase was created and written for the National Broadcasting Company by Lawrence Klee. Heard in the cast were Kermit Murdoch, Helen Gerald, Chuck Webster, Stotts Cotsworth, Pauline Drake, and Ed Peck. The Chase is directed and transcribed by Ed King. Fred Collins speaking. Next week, a man tries to elude Cupid's deadly arrows aimed by a predatory female on the chase. This is Red Cross Month. Did you know that in the Far East alone, hundreds of experienced Red Cross workers are serving our fighting men in Korea and Japan? These skilled workers and the personal services they provide must continue. A generous check to your local Red Cross chapter is your contribution toward this great work. Answer the call today with your heart.